addition and subtraction using partial sums and differences. What are partial sums and partial differences? Well, partial means a part or a piece of something. A sum is the answer to an addition problem, and a difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. So using partial sums and differences means breaking addition and subtraction problems into pieces, adding and subtracting the pieces, and then putting them back together. Let's try using partial sums to add. When we add, we call it partial sums because sums are answers to addition problems. The first thing we want to do is to break each of these numbers into pieces. Expanded form is an easy way to do this. So I'm adding 273 plus 126. I'm going to write both of those numbers in expanded form like this. 273, that's 200 plus 70 plus 3. 126, that's 100 plus 20 plus 6. Now we'll add the pieces together. We're going to add the 1s and then the 10s and then the 100s like this. 3 plus 6 is 9. Now let's add the 10s. 70 plus 20 is 90. And finally, let's add the 100s. 200 plus 100 is 300. Finally, we just put the number back together. What I have here is my answer in expanded form. Let's write it in standard form. 300 plus 90 plus 9, that's the number 399, and that is my answer. Let's try a trickier one. Once again, I'm going to write each number in expanded form. 436 would be 400 plus 30 plus 6, and 281 would be 200 plus 80 plus 1. I'm going to add the pieces together. 6 plus 1 is 7. 30 plus 80, that's 110. That's a little too big. I see a hundred there. Let's put the hundred up here with the other hundreds. We'll leave the 10 and move that hundred up to be with the other hundreds. Now let's add the hundreds. 100 plus 400 plus 200 is 700. And once again, I just put the pieces back together. This is my answer in expanded form. In standard form, that's the number 717. Now, let's try subtracting using partial differences. When we subtract, we call it partial differences instead of partial sums, because a difference is what you call the answer to a subtraction problem. So we're subtracting 765 minus 421, and I'm going to start by breaking my numbers into pieces and writing them in expanded form like this. 700 plus 60 plus 5, and we're subtracting 400 plus 20 plus 1. Just like when we were adding, we're going to subtract each piece, starting with the 1s, and then the 10s, and then the 100s. Just be careful. I know there's a lot of plus signs in this problem right now. Those are just part of writing the numbers in expanded form. Remember that this is a subtraction problem. So this time, I need to be subtracting. 5 minus 1 is 4. 60 minus 20 is 40, and 700 minus 400 is 300. Now, just like with partial sums, I need to put the number back together. My answer is in expanded form, 300 plus 40 plus 4. When I put that back together, I get the number 344. This is the answer to my subtraction problem. Now let's try a trickier one. Once again, I'm going to write the numbers in expanded form. 400 plus 20 plus 8, and 100 plus 60 plus 6. Now I'm going to subtract the pieces. 8 minus 6 is 2. 20 minus 60 is, hmm, I can't take 60 away from 20. 60 is bigger than 20. I'm going to have to do some regrouping here. Let's move a group of 100 over into the tens place. So I will take away 100. I only have 300 left now in my top number. And I'll move it over to be with the 20. Now I have 120 there. 
Now I can subtract. 120 minus 60, I can do that, that's 60. And 300 minus 100 is 200. There's my answer. It's just an expanded form. So let's put it back together. 200 plus 60 plus 2 is 262. And that is the answer to my subtraction problem. Reminders. Write both numbers in expanded form. Add or subtract the pieces and then put the number back together. Sometimes you'll need to regroup. 